scriptures. Yes. Um, I want every one of us to prepare a notebook and a pen where you are going to write. There are many, many verses that I want us to read about. Let us read the book of Ezekiel chapter 33 from verse 13. Ezekiel 33 from verse 13 to 19. Let us read. I believe everyone is welcome. Let me see your hands. Wave your hands. If you are not waving, it means you are not comfortable. Wave your hands again. Let me see you. God bless you. God bless you. Yes. Ezekiel, let's read it. Who, who found it? I need somebody who can help me. Ezekiel. Chapter 3, 3, verse 13. Today, people who are working on crunches will leave them in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you are sick, uh, normally, um, Preachers, they like to say, expect you are healing. Me, I'm not saying that. I'm saying you are healed already. Yeah. Uh, in all the altar calls I have seen, I had people or ministers of the gospel, normally they do altar call of salvation. They do altar call of maybe repentance or whatever, but I have never heard the altar call of those who have demons come forward. <laughs> I've never heard that. So, and you'll be surprised that there are people who are possessed with demons, but we don't come, we don't call them to come forth. So uh, today I think we can do it to say, if you have a demon, run forward here. <laughs> so that that demon can be casted out. Hallelujah. Because we, we do everything, but there are small, small things that we forget sometimes to do. And we ignore them because we think it's like um, not normal to do it. We can do it. Or we call people who do not have shoes. We say, if you don't have shoes, come forward so that somebody can see you and buy you shoes. Hallelujah. Let us read the scriptures. When I shall say to the Russians that he shall surely live, if he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he has committed, he shall die for it. Again, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, if he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right. If the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he had robbed, walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity. He shall surely live, he shall not die. Verse 16, none of his sins that he has committed shall be mentioned unto him. He that unto him he had done that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. Verse 17 it says, Yet the children of thy people say, The way of the Lord is not equal. But as for them, their way is not, is not equal. 18. When the righteous turneth from his righteousness and committeth iniquity, he shall even die thereby. Verse 19 says, But if the wicked turn from his wickedness and do that which is lawful and right, he shall live thereby. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your holy weight, which is light and sharper than a two-edged sword. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Um, when they did say I must come and minister to the people of God, um, what came to my mind was, what is it that I'm going to say to Charis people who are 
used to our father's teachings and preachings. So there is something which um, I picked from the scriptures which I want to talk about. Where we have read, we are hearing about two kinds of lives. You are hearing about what? Two kinds of lives. So I want to talk about righteousness. So the kinds of lives that we read about here is like characters of people or of two different people. One, it says, one is doing or is practicing wickedness and the other one is practicing righteousness. Hallelujah. So the Bible says now, if you are practicing righteousness for many years, and it comes to a point whereby you start to practice wickedness. The Bible says, the good you have done shall be forgotten. What shall be remembered is what you do now. Hallelujah. So it says now, when you do something very, very bad for many years, when now you come to Jesus Christ, he does not check what you have done. He's checking what you are saying currently. That's why sins can be forgiven now. And it's a human being who can go back to the sin after forgiveness. So that's why we have a problem in the Christian or church community whereby every day sin is preached. In fact, if you can take the life or the preachings and teachings of Jesus, he was not dwelling in most cases in preaching about sin, 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 sin. Jesus will tell you what you are supposed to do now and tomorrow. That's all. And he'll give you a promise which must come to pass. So it's only sometimes when people bring, they are brought to him to be judged, that's when he shows his compassion of saying, I do not condemn you. Go and sin no more. I remember one day, there were men who brought a woman who was caught in adultery. The Bible says, Jesus did not condemn her either. But all he said was, if you guys who brought this woman to me, if you do not have sin, be the first to cast a stone on her. And the Bible said he bowed and started to write with his finger on the ground. Little did they know that what Jesus was writing. So the Bible said now when he stood up, he realized that it's only the woman who is left with him. And all the accusers are gone. Hallelujah. So everyone now here could judge himself to say, I know also that I have sinned, so I cannot be able to first cast the stone on this woman. So they decided to leave Jesus with the woman there so that tomorrow they can come back and say, Jesus now is talking to women everywhere because according to their law by then, men were not allowed to intermingle with, with, with ladies. More especially, if you are a Jew, you are not allowed to speak to a Samaritan or to a Pharisee or to whoever. So now here, Jesus was supposed to be caught by sin of talking to a woman, and there are two. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible said, Jesus said to the woman, I also do not condemn you. Go and sin no more. So everyone now can be astonished of saying, how can somebody who is caught, we call it red-handed. If somebody is caught red-handed committing adultery, and now Jesus say, I don't condemn this person, what kind of judgment is this? So now when we have read, the Bible said, if you practice righteousness, and all of a sudden you change your way of living, you start to practice wickedness. All your righteousness, your righteousness will be for, forgotten. Only the wickedness you are doing now is the one which shall be recorded. Hallelujah. 
So I want you to take note of that, that anything you do now is the one which is recorded. So our lives are not determined by what sometimes we have done. The Bible said in the book of 2 Corinthians 5.17 that anyone who is in Christ is a new being. It's a new what? It's a new being. The old is gone. The new has come. So it means the old has been cancelled. In the Old Testament, when you commit sin, God was allowing curses to flow from you to the next generation and the other generation, then the next and the next and the next. So by the time of Jesus now, Jesus era, he says, if you come to me and confess now, your sins become forgiven now, and you become a new person. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell somebody and say, I want to be new. Say, I want to be new. There are two types of righteousness that I want to talk about. Number one is, I wish you can write it down, self-righteousness. Self-righteousness is when you justify yourself. You defend yourself and always want to prove a point. Always want to prove to people that you are innocent. And still you remain guilty. Self-righteousness. We found that in the book of Genesis chapter 7 from 1 to 3. Let's go there. Genesis 7. Hallelujah. And the Lord said unto Noah, Come down and all thy house into the ark, for thee have I seen righteousness before me in this generation. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by servants, the male and his female, and of beasts that are not lean by two, the male and his female, of fowls also of the air by servants, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. So the words which I want us to look at closely is from verse 2. It says, of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by servants, the male and, the, and, and his female, and the beasts that are not clean, you shall also take. Hallelujah. Here, there are two kinds of animals that God was directing or was instructing his prophet Noah to take into the ark. He said, you shall take the clean ones and you shall also take the unclean ones into the ark. I, I believe they should be also the dangerous ones and also the most kind animals which were supposed to be written. I'm not saying the Bible is wrong, I'm just saying. Because there were animals, more especially the unclean ones. The unclean ones is the ones that are not eatable. You cannot even taste their meat. So now, the Bible says, God here says to Noah, you shall take two animals. One, unclean. Number two, the unclean. You shall bring them into the ark. Remember, the ark is the ark of God. It's not only the ark. So it must carry something pure, which is justified or sanctified by Almighty God. So now here, it's so surprising to see that God will consider something which is unclean to be considered. I don't know if you are hearing me. So God will say, the unclean animal, which is rejected by people, take it also to the ark. The reason is they must, after all the flood, they must reproduce according to their own selves again. So the question is, how can God say the unclean ones, which are maybe not eatable, be also considered and they must also multiply. The simple answer is 
God has justified these animals. Do you know that animals cannot sin? Hallelujah. There's no animal on earth which will go to hell. Nothing. It's only women beings who do not want to listen to the voice of God. Are you aware of that? If you are aware, let me see your hand. Hallelujah. So normally we, we, we as human beings, we are scared of those animals. And we don't know that also God loves them. And I think there's something which has been shifted here. In the beginning when God created a man, the Bible said there was no rain. God was using dew to water the whole earth. Now, the reason why God allowed the rain to fall, it was because of a human being who is now available to tilt the ground. So, all animals, all subjected to, to be under a human being's authority. So, things have changed because of wickedness, because of unrighteousness, also because of self-righteousness. Hallelujah. You find that instead of the animal become scared of you, you are scared of animal. And things now have changed even worse. In our dispensation, we are unable to walk at night because we are no longer scared of animals now. We are scared of ourselves. You find that you cannot go to shop at night because you are afraid somebody can kill you. Can you see how far we went away from God? So we must come back. Tell somebody and say, let's come back to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. The second righteousness is God's or godly righteousness. Godly what? The godly righteousness is when God speaks for you. Even if people condemn you or say all negative things to you, God will still give you victory. Hallelujah. And does not mean that you won't meet challenges. Challenges will be there, but because God is the one who will speak for you, all your battles will be conquered easily. By God, you can win all the battles because your battles now are through him. So it means it's you here and God here. So the battles are on the other side. So your battles or your challenges are between, are between you. It's, it's like you are between, God is between you and your challenges. So when the challenge must come, must face, face the living God. So when you have to face the challenges yourself, it's God first before the challenge. I don't know if you're hearing me. So that's why the Bible said our warfare is not carnal, though we are in the flesh. Hallelujah. So our warfare is not what? Carnal. But it's mighty through him. That's God's righteousness. So when God has set, has declared you righteous, it means there are benefits. There are what? There are benefits. And one of the best benefits is long life. You know, before God will allow people to live 100 years, 900 years, 600 years, because they had dedicated all their lives to the living God. So anything they do, they'll first inquire from him if I have to do it or not. The very same man we read about, Noah, this man lived for a long, long time. And it's not, was not even his will, I believe so. It was the will of God for the purpose of the living God to be executed through him. Imagine if Noah was not there and God wanted to kill everyone. And there's no one who is found righteous in the eyes of God. It means God will just destroy everything. Look at Sodom and Gomorrah. The Bible says, after God or the angels of God blessed Abraham, they, when he was escorting them out of the village, they looked at Sodom and Gomorrah and they said, 
Now, after blessing you, we are going to destroy, destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Are you hearing me? When, when some, somebody is getting blessed, someone is receiving a curse. Have you seen something like that before? So, when we are in the position where God has positioned us into, when we receive blessings, you will see your enemies receiving the curses. Are you hearing that? So now, after they have blessed, the very same angels, they came with the blessing to Father Abraham. From there, they go now and destroy them. And the Bible said, God decided not to keep quiet. He said, I would rather tell or reveal my secret to the one which I love. Remember the book of Amos 3, 7, the Bible said, God does nothing except he reveals his secret to his prophet or to his servants, the prophet. So God decided to say, because there's a secret I have in my heart, there's something I want to do, but there's one person on earth that I can speak to. Imagine when God speaks to you for your nation. Can you see what kind of level is that? That's where God wants us to be. Tell somebody and say, I'm going to that level. Whereby before God can judge South Africa, he will first say, I know there's whom whom in Tembisa. I know there's whom whom in Pretoria. I know there's whom whom in Cape Town that I have to tell. Hallelujah. It's when you are justified by God. Say, I want this justification. The Bible said he told Abraham the secret to say, Abraham, Sodom and Gomorrah, which was chosen by Lord, your nephew, to go and stay at, now is in turmoil, is in great sin, and I'm going to finish everyone. So it gave Abraham a chance to negotiate with God. To do what? And he started to intercede and say, Father, if you find maybe 50 Russia swans, are you still going to destroy everything? God said, no, I won't. So he said, what if you find only 45 people? He said, I won't destroy for the sake of that 45. Until none was found righteous, only Lord. Hallelujah. You know, I was asking myself why there are things which are happening in our lives and we don't know about. I only knew yesterday that there is recession in South Africa. And I was asking myself why we did not know about it before so that we can pray and stop it. Hallelujah. So it means there's somewhere we lack. There's somewhere we, we lack. Because before anything happened, we have to know. Abraham knew the plan of God. No one knew. There are many prophets who knew in the Bible. Many great servants of the Lord. But things will just happen, affect our finances, affect our lives, affect our economy, everything. And we are here, we are calling ourselves children of God, but we know nothing. Is it good? Let's go to the benefits of righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5.17, the one I was talking about. It says what? Let's read it. I believe you are writing these verses. Are you writing? God bless you. 5.17. Let's read. It says, therefore, therefore it means is the continuation of something. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Normally, passed away, we use it to a human being. If somebody is deceased, we say the person has passed away. So here the Bible says, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, meaning all things are buried. Behold, all, all things are become new. Are you seeing the verse? Everything about you, if you are justified by God, everything. The Bible said, all, all, all is new, all. Your finances, new. Car, new. Clothes, new. House, new. Job, new. 
business new because the old is gone and the new has come. The, the new does not come with one benefit. It, it, it comes with all because all is gone and all has come. So all must replace all here. Hallelujah. All old, anything old is gone. All which is now new has come. It means everything about you must change. Tell somebody and say, I'm changing. You don't know me. You will know me just now. Because God is transforming me. So it means the new comes. That's the first benefit when you are godly righteous. The second one is no more condemnation. Romans 8.1. Romans what? I believe you are still writing. Romans 8.1. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. There are two things here. There are people who walk after the spirit, and there are those who walk after the flesh. The Bible says the children of God are led by what? By the flesh. By what? By the spirit. Which spirit? Holy Spirit. So now, the Bible said, if you are, it says, therefore, if you are in the Lord Jesus, there is now no more condemnation. It means there was any more condemnation. So that there is now no. The Bible say now. When? Everything must be done when? Now. Now there is no more condemnation to those who are in. That's the second benefit. No more condemnation. People can try to talk, can try to condemn but no more condemnation. Tell somebody and say, you can't condemn me because I'm justified by the living God. The third one is, God hears your cry. We found it in the book of Psalm 34, verse 15. Let's read it. Psalm 34, 15. When you are godly, righteous, God can hear your cry. It means when you pray, you are ahead in heaven. And because your prayers will be ahead, it means the answer is inevitable. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. Are you hearing that? And his ears are open unto their cry. It means... Those who are in Russia, the ear of God is closed to them. You can cry, fast, do everything. As long as you are not Russia before the Lord, the ear of the Lord will remain closed for you. You can cry and shout until your voice is finished. As long as you are not godly Russia, the ear of the Lord will never hear your cry or your prayer. I remember this, the book of 2 Peter 3, 7. It says, you husbands, you must treat your wives as weaker vessels so that your prayers cannot be hindered. So when I look at these verses, they correlate. If you treat your wife badly and the wife cries or she has grievance against you. When you pray, God cannot hear you. Your prayers become hindered, no matter how long you can try to pray. So there are some little things which we have to fix before we can pray. The Bible said in the book of Ecclesiastes that we have to kill little foxes. We have to do what? Kill and destroy little foxes which can spoil our field. So it means you might be doing right, but there are some little things which can spoil everything in front of you. 
and your remembrance is cut off, my Jesus. This thing, it means, you know, when you die on earth, there's what is called a tombstone. A tombstone is there for, for memories. At least we can remember you when we look at the tombstone because your, your name will be there, date of birth and date of death will be there. You know, and other people, they can even decorate it and write whatever, whatever. So the Bible says, when you do evil in front of, in the eyes of the Lord, you will never even be remembered. So it means even your tombstone can be removed. Somebody can come and build a house on top of your grave. Are you hearing that? So no remembrance of you, nothing, nothing, no, zero. When maybe you have children, they meet them on the street. Or somebody can just adopt them and say, these are my children. And you find that these are your children that you worked hard for. You were trying by all means to make sure that they go to school. Even this very same children of yours, they can just say, no, you are not our father. You are not our mother. It's when you are doing evil, you are not remembered. Hallelujah. Verse 17, it says, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth them, and deliver them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save such as be of a contrary spirit. Verse 19, it says, Many are the afflictions of a righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Are you hearing that? Many are the afflictions of the righteous. So it means when you are righteous, you will face attacks. People will speak against you. People will create stories, will accuse you. But thank God, because the Bible has a promise for you. Though your afflictions are so much, God Almighty will deliver you out of them all. So all you need to do now is for you to be righteous so that God can fight for you. Can you see the wonderful thing? Hallelujah. So now, when you do wrong, there is this negativity which will come. When you do right, there is this positivity which will favor you. Hallelujah. Number, number four thing, your children will be blessed. Proverbs 20, verse I'm talking about the benefits when you do right. The Bible said, the just man walks in his integrity. Are you there? Are, are you there? The just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. Verse 8. A king that sitteth in the throne of judgment scattereth away all evil with his eyes. Who can say, I have made my heart lean and pure before my sins? I love this, verse 7. The Bible says that a just man walks in his integrity. It means there is too much respect to you when you are justified by God. Hallelujah. So other people who are not aware of your presence will still notice that you are around. Because you are justified by Almighty God. The righteous man walks in his integrity and his children are blessed after you. So this, I can say, is a judgment to say we have to look at our children if they are blessed or not. So you might, we must check. Are my children, I'm talking about adopted children, biological children, spiritual children. Check them. Are they getting blessed? No. Maybe the wrong is you. Are they getting blessed? Yes, it means I'm in the right track. Hallelujah. Because now, this, I'm not, I'm not taking for myself. This, that's what the Bible says. A just man, a righteous man, walks in his integrity. And his children are blessed after him. So it means already your children inherit your blessing when you are still around. They don't wait for the will. They become blessed when? Now. 
Are you hearing that? Tell somebody and say, my children. I'm talking about all of them. Because today, I'll be righteous. Psalm 37, verse 21. It says, all good things belong to you when you are righteous before the living God. Let's read it. I told you we're going to read many verses. 37, verse 21. Psalm 37. Psalm 37 verse, let's read it. Psalm 37 verse 21. The wicked borroweth and payeth not again. Are you seeing the verse? But the righteous showeth mercy. Hallelujah. I think it's what we have to practice after this preaching. The righteous, they don't borrow from anyone, but all they do is they give. And when they borrow, we won't say paid back. We'll say we are giving. Don't pay us back. Because we will have abundance. We'll have what? Abundance. So when you show mercy, the Bible says you are righteous before the living God. Verse 22, it says, for such as be blessed of him, shall inherit the earth. It means everything on earth, every good thing on earth. Remember the book of James, he says, all good gifts, all good what? Gifts are coming from the living God, not bad. All good gifts. I was listening to somebody one day, he said, uh, he said to me, Emmanuel, you said God is good. I say, yes, sir. He said, if God is good, and is powerful, why he does not kill Satan? Be because Satan is troubling us every day. I say, brother, you are lost. God cannot kill anyone. Hallelujah. So his concern was, he is failing to change. So he is blaming Satan, and he's also blaming God to say, no, me, I'm not failing. In fact, the one who makes me to fail is Satan. And Satan is placed in that position by God. So why God does not fight for me by killing him, then I'll be free. Are you understanding that? So I realize that we lack information because he does not know the scripture that says we are given power over him. When Jesus saw him falling, he said, I have given you what? Power. Over who? Hallelujah. So now, the Bible says, of such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and that be cursed of him shall be cut off. It means here, God is not going to curse anyone. The curse is already set. So you choose. You do the wrong, the curse comes. You do the right, the, the good comes. So you just click, click the button. You just click the right button, and the good comes. The bad comes. So tell somebody and say, I don't want to justify myself. I want to be justified by God. Verse 23, let's carry on. The steps of a good man are ordered by God. And he in his way. The steps, the steps, the steps. Remember the book of Proverbs 6. is talking about God. there are six uh, sins which God hates and there are seven which he cannot tolerate. One of them is he hates the sin whereby you walk to share the innocent blood. Hallelujah. God hates that kind of sin and he cannot tolerate it. So now here he's talking about the steps. When you take your steps is God already who will order your steps to your destiny. So now, if your steps are not ordered by him, it means you might not even go to your destiny. That's why I think is the reason why there are so many premature deaths 
you find that somebody has still have plants, is 19 years, and is killed by headache. I just think so. Why? Because the steps of a righteous man are ordered by him, and he takes you to your destiny. There's no way that you can fail. You know, sometimes when you travel, maybe in a car or a plane, you will feel uncomfortable because of the road, an uneven road, and you start to have doubt to say, maybe the car will fall with me, and you forget what God said to you. Maybe God say, go and preach in Pumalanga there. Hallelujah. And on the way, you meet some challenges. So instead of focusing on what you have been told, you focus on the current situation to say, if this car falls, it means I'm dead. You forgot the promise of saying, go and preach in The, step, the steps of a bad man are ordered by? God bless you, you understand. Verse 24, it says, Though he fall, who? The righteous man. He shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord abhorred him with his hand. My Jesus. Are you hearing that? It means there might be temptations, tests, there might also be falling. But because you are ordered by him, the Bible said he will uphold you with his hand and you will always remain victorious. Say, I'm victorious today. I'm victorious today. And, I never and I will never fail. Because I'm appointed, because I'm appointed. By, Almighty God. by Almighty God. Verse 5. I have been young and now am old. Listen to this. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken. This man is talking something out of knowledge, understanding, and experience. He said, when I was still young, people, I saw wicked people being abandoned, but only the righteous, I have seen their, the provision of God in their lives. Until now, I'm still seeing that in my old age. Since I was young, I was checking and I saw that a righteous man cannot be abandoned by Almighty God. He said, now, can you see, this is, this is a powerful experience. This man, when he, in, he does not even talk about the age of, of, of his you know, youth. He only says, since I was young. Maybe... Let's give an example. Since he was 16 and years, he has not seen a righteous forsaken. Say, I want to be righteous. So that I cannot be forsaken. The Bible said, he, the Lord, the ones he loves, he provides to them, even if they are sleeping. Have you seen verse like that? So, I'm not saying people must be lazy and they might just sleep and expect God to come and provide. No. I'm saying, there are those who are supposed to, to work, there are those who are supposed to do business, there are those who are supposed to preach. Hallelujah. And because it's God who has placed you in that position, he will make a way for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Anyone who is not working, you must make sure your phone has battery full because you will receive that miracle call in Jesus' name. Who? Somebody is saying, I'm, I'm old, I'm starting to lose shape, I'm, I'm starting to be ugly. Listen to me. Marriage does not go by that you are thinking. It's God who will say, I'm saying, you will be married. Yeah. And no one can stop it. Yeah. There, there are others who are criticized to say, look at your books. What is it that your education has done for you? Listen to this. You are not going to get that job or that business or that promotion because of the books, but because of the living God. Amen. Because it's in Him. It's in Him. The Bible said, the blessing of the Lord, they make us what? Rich. It's like others, they are not sure. The blessings of the Lord, they make us what? Rich. And add no sorrow on them. 
Are you hearing that? Amen. The blessings of the Lord are doing what? They make us rich. Say, I'm rich. I'm rich. Somebody will, will say, ah, this man is playing with me. I don't even have food in my house. Say, I'm rich. I'm rich. We don't walk by side. We walk by. Say, I'm rich. I'm rich. And the blessings of the Lord, of the Lord. Makes, me one. makes me one. I cannot be defined by this situation. I might not be working now, but give me two weeks. Tell me, tell somebody and say, give me two weeks. I'm coming with a testimony. I will come and testify. Right here in Charis. My Jesus. It's like, it's like I start to be crazy so because there's too much anointing here. Yeah. You know, I don't know. There's daddy here and mama. I don't know if you have seen them. It's your eyes. There are people who have problems with their eyes. Don't blame me. Daddy is here with mama. So if you don't see them, please, um, let's get an optometrist who can help with spectacles. Or, or run now to, I don't know if we can get them from ShopRite. I want, I want you to see what I'm talking about. Somebody who is not working for many, many years. That joblessness is ending now. Yeah. That joblessness is ending now in Jesus' name. Yeah. It's long time people are criticizing you. They talk many, many stories. They even speak curses. And they forget that you are the righteousness of the Lord. Amen. Literally, do they know the plan of God about your life? Amen. Sometimes when, when I look at what God is doing in Charis here, I start to think about the small shack which I found the first day I came here. I'll ask myself, is it the same church? I realize that this is the Lord's doing. And no man can stop it. Amen. No one can stop it. Amen. People of Charis, listen to this. Stop believing in small things. In small what? Start to believe in... Everyone who is here, start to believe in... Not big. Is a poor English. Great things. Start to believe in. Because you can't finish this God. David said, I was young. Now I'm old. In all that those years of my life, I saw the righteous and forsaken. Meaning God walks with the righteous people and he makes sure that they eat, they loathe, you know, when you check the book of Matthew, it's talking about you are worrying for nothing. You are doing what? <laughs> Look at the grass. The grass never prayed and say, God, I'm drying up. Bring dew, bring winter, bring summer, bring rain. But God knows that the grass now is getting dry, is good. It must endure that dryness. Because some months to come, I, God, will bring rain. The very same grass which you did not care of, take care of, you are the one to run and sleep on it. Because God has provided rain to the same grass. So what about you who are created by his image? Do you think God is sleeping? Who, my Jesus... Believe God more. Amen. Believe God? More. I want us to finish. Believe God more. Amen. Believe God? More. Thank you, Jesus. Say thank you, Jesus. Amen. The last verse I want us to read is the book of Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter? From verse 9. Luke 18. Verse 9. It says what? And he spake this parable. This was Jesus. 
here. Unto Satan, which trusted in themselves. Are you seeing that? That they were righteous and despised others. Verse 10. Two men went up into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess, and the publican standing afar off. Are you following me? Will not lift up so much of his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other, for everyone that exalted himself shall be abased. Meaning, when, when you are self-righteous, you are so full of yourself. You, you, you are so full of pride. You cannot even say sorry. You can't even say what? You can't even say sorry. You, you expect people to come and apologize to you. You can't even say sorry. Sorry to you is taboo. If you say sorry, you lose your status. You lose your, your throne seat. So now, these two people here, it's Jesus who was talking about it. He said, there are two people. They went to the temple and prayed. The one said, I'm righteous. I tithe. I fast twice a week. I give. I do everything. So Lord, make sure that tomorrow you bless me. And by this time tomorrow, if you don't bless me, Lord, I don't worship you anymore. As long I'm in this problem and you are just sitting there in heaven, look at me. Do it. He's not even saying, please, Lord. So the Bible said, the other one said, Lord, please, I'm a sinner. I can't even lift my eyes to heaven. I will bow down my head. All I want is your mercy and grace. Lord, forgive me. Lord, cleanse me. The Bible said, he went down to his house justified. Two people from the cross, Jesus was crucified with two thieves or two criminals. The Bible says, one said, Lord, you are the son of God, but look at the trouble you are facing. He said, it's the same as mine. Help yourself and help me too. And the other one said, hey, shut up. This man is Lord of Lords. Remember me, Lord, when you enter into a paradise. The Bible said his sins were forgiven. Are you hearing that? Mostly when we justify ourselves, we are rejecting God. I heard one preacher one day said he was concerned about a certain church. This church was there for many years, for ages. So one day when he entered the church, he's like he was invited to minister in the church. He said, but Lord, why this man of God suffering for a long time? Look at the church. It has been here for ages, but no progress. What is wrong? And Holy Spirit say, they have rejected me. That's why I can't dwell here. They are cursed. Leave them. The man of God says, sorry, sir. Uh, I have to go because I have some commitments at home. He was afraid to tell the truth. To say, Pastor, you have rejected the Holy Spirit. That's why your situation is like this. There are people who are like that even in our dispensation. You are justifying yourself. You tell yourself that you are right. You can't even say sorry. Go to three people and say, sorry, ma'am. Sorry, sir. Sorry, ma'am. Sorry. Sir. Go now to three people and say, if I have hated you, Please, sorry, forgive me. Go now. Go. Stand up and go. If you are standing there, I will point you and say, you stand and go. Go and say, sorry. If I have hated you, sorry. 
I can't justify myself. Sorry. Sorry, I can't justify myself. I'm wrong, I know. I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Go, 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 go. Don't sit, go and say, Sir, ma'am, sorry, I'm wrong. I'm wrong, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Let, let us settle our matters. Tell somebody and say, let us settle our matters now. Let us settle our matters. It's long I'm in this scene, let us settle our matters. Let us settle our matters now. I don't want to face this turmoil anymore. Clap hands for yourself. If you didn't do it, go, come back and sit down. God bless you. If you did not do it, I'm like Pilate. I wash my hands. I've done my job. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because there are other prophetic ways which we undermine. Sometimes we, 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 we don't know or we don't understand what is prophecy. So when the prophetic word is uttered, you still do not understand if it's, it's the pastor or it's God. You just think, ah, now he's trying to play with us. So because you, you, you know too much, you are self-righteous. You are too much of yourself. Hallelujah. There is a prayer which I want us to pray. Let us close our Bibles. God bless you. There's a prayer which I want us to pray. Let us stand on our feet. Close our Bibles. Let's stand on our feet. We have now asked forgiveness to our peers, but we haven't asked forgiveness from Almighty God. That's what I want us to do. Hallelujah. If you know that you were self righteous if you know that you are what? Se come here now. I count only four. One, two, three, three, three. 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 Give me space. Let me pass. I count again. One. Two. Let me pass. God bless you. Oh my God. I can't stand where my father stands. I'll stand this time. One. One. Two. Three, four, lift your hands up. We have to pray. And after this prayer, go and sin no more. Close your eyes. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. It's long. It's long. I'm, in this sin. I'm in this sin. Self righteousness. Self -righteousness. Father, my father, my father, please, Holy Jesus, please, Holy Jesus transform, me transform me from this sin, from this sin to, your to your righteousness. Lord, Lord I, also need I also need all these benefits. All benefits. Jesus, Jesus, thank you, thank you for your holy word. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Remain standing. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for cleaning us. For cleaning us, Lord. For cleaning us. We have been unrighteous, thinking that we know, only to find that we know nothing. Lord, forgive us. In Jesus' name. Father, Fill them with your spirit and power now. I count four. Holy Spirit will touch you. One, two, three, four. Fall on them now in Jesus' name, Lord. Touch them. Touch them and clean them now. Touch them. 
touch them now, Holy Spirit, in front of us now. In the name of Jesus. Touch them now. Everyone, everyone who is standing here in front. Fill them with your righteousness and your spirit. Touch! 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 Fill them with your righteousness and power to conquer this sin. Fill them, fill them, fill them, fill them, fill them. Touch them. Touch them now. Open your mouth and say, Father, touch me. Now. Keep quiet, he will touch you. I want you to hear the ones that you are touching, Lord. Touch them. I want to see them. Touch them by your power. I'm seeing this one. I'm seeing you. I'm seeing you. He's touching 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 you, my sister. He's touching you and cleaning you. He's touching you, my brother. He's touching you. Receive it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it, take it, take it. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Receive it, receive it. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Clap hands for yourself and go back. You can go back. God bless you.